Coming up next, Nate Cassie is an artist. Born, born in New Jersey, grew up on the East Coast and the Midwest, got his BA from Hope College in Holland, Michigan, his MFA from UTSA. His work's been shown around the country, including the Corcoran in Washington, D.C., and the City Museum in Mexico, also most recently at the McNay Museum at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. He is a past fellow in the Art Base Foundation's International Artist in Residence Program and the National Foundation for the Advancement of the Arts Residency Program in Miami. Please welcome Nate Cassie. Nate. Y'all look good out there. Thanks for coming. Um, I come from a family of makers, if not artists, in seventh grade shop class with power tools in seventh grade. I made this lamp. It's still in our front bedroom of our house. It's one of the first complicated things I remember making mostly on my own. My interest in art started uh, with a sculpture class my freshman year of college. I found that art was a... Uh, uh, discipline that I could put a lot of, a basket that I could put a lot of different eggs into. A lot of the work that I do, while it looks very physically different, involves some sort of physicality here. The viewer had to lean up against the wall, look through a lens to see the piece. I was a past resident at Art Pace. Uh, the view on the left is the outside of the piece. The views on the right, looking through lenses set into that padded vinyl wall. And usually, in all the views, something's looking back at you, or you're looking at the back of yourself. KISS was installed on Houston Street for an exhibit in empty storefronts. During the opening, I had a, a band of volunteers that helped fill a space from head <coughs> to knees of translucent kisses, creating sort of a minimalist band that wrapped around the inside of the store windows. This is uh, Atomic. It was created for the Museum of Contemporary Art in Houston. In an atom, you don't know where all the parts are all the time exactly. And this piece is kind of like that. You look through a wall like a periscope, but if you look through the video peepholes, you saw something totally different on the bottom right. And it's kind of like about love and certainty. <clears throat> um, years ago, I took photographs of people who came to visit my community um, at the UTSA satellite space. And those photos form the backbone of my first solo exhibit here in San Antonio. The couch was a gathering point, but also a, a great photo backdrop. And the first exhibit utilized the furniture as well as the images. Portraiture has shown up a lot in the work that I do. This is a series called Lovers, an eye from two people in a, in a couple. Uh, it's inspired by a small painting in the Manil collection in Houston of a woman's eye. Just enough information to maybe conjure the rest of the face or to get yourself in trouble. <laughs> um, many years later, I made these large scale charcoal drawings based on those black and white photographs from the couch. And the series was called Be Careful What You Wish For. Yeah. It's about creativity and the passage of time. The drawing table also has these wooden stalactite formations underneath. Um, some of you, or many of you maybe, if you know my work at all, know the two-dimensional work that's abstract in nature based on cyclical systems, natural systems. The static objects that I make are sort of a vital component in the thought processes for the more time-based works. And these are often two separate streams that come together only later. Um, point of contact with people and place in San Antonio for me is very important. I've been involved with the Artist Foundation here for the, since its inception and done all sorts of ridiculous things from carving ice to roasting whole large animals to help raise money to give away money to artists in, in San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> I wrote a letter to 50 some odd artist friends asking them to make drawings of birdhouses and beehives. That's what that is, believe it or not. <laughs> they symbolize parts of community. Um, I produced a catalog and I showed the archive of drawings at Three Walls Gallery here in San Antonio and I promised the artists that I would send them a piece back. And the tattoo here is designed by Morgan Haberly, a former student of mine who <coughs> runs Classic Tattoo in San Marcos. The print was printed by Heron Hound Press here in San Antonio. Like the pig in the previous image, I am committed. 
this body of work also spun off a Luminaria based project where I traded art with the public where I made limited edition prints and if you came up and you made a drawing for me of a birdhouse or a beehive I gave you a print. You also see some of the static images out of that series in the shot the birdhouse and the beehive on the wall there. In late 2010 my friend Chuck Ramirez met his untimely end and uh, early the next year I created a sculptural replica of his dining table which I and literally hundreds of other people had shared food and drink at. Um, the table once, of course, looked pristine, and then it was relegated to an outdoor space. Credit for the photo here belongs to Deborah Sugarman. Uh, the table served as a sort of a respite, an island almost, a meeting point at Luminaria 2011 outside of an exhibit of the charcoal large-scale drawings. I spent the evening photographing again my community uh, friends, acquaintances who came to spend time together and went the photos on the table of those original black and white images. In a recent series of drawings and prints, also printed by Harrenham Press, I'm utilizing natural systems again, but also um, there are more representational in nature, uh, branches of trees. And they take on many connections to things like vascular systems, but also things like systems of social interaction. Beginning uh, this year, my wife Ethel Shipton, who's also an artist, and I began a series of one night events called Vacancy. Uh, the first was called Super Combo Platter. It was a group show of San Antonio artists that I had actually put together for a venue outside of San Antonio, and we showed it again here in an empty apartment just outside of Alamo Heights. The March Vacancy event was curated by Ethel, and I got to be an artist for a change, and that give and take, and I realized a long-held goal to create a barbershop as sort of a piece of art. This is kind of a stage version of a barbershop with props rather than quote-unquote art, and that's kind of what I was going for. Um, I cut hair for three hours. I'm not a professional barber, but that has not stopped me from being a boxer or a bartender or a wedding officiant or a caterer either. All of these are formats in which you can create a moment, an interaction, an intimate exchange. <laughs> Hair from the barbershop was used to make the marks on plates for Special Project Social, a pop-up food and culture event that's done by Tim the Girl Catering and Peter Zubiate Furniture. Using the hair, we fired the plates and made the mark, and even the chef Tim, who was not keen on hair on the plates, like the finished product, so we did our own.